Bang, bang, they shot me down. Bang, bang, that awful sound. Bang, bang, my baby shot me down. Jillian Reed lay on a dirty couch in an office she worked 14 hour days in. Blood was stuck to her side and she pondered her life. She was alone. The only person who had really thought about her was an android she had just changed so he no longer had an opium addiction and she was going to die alone. No friends, no lovers, and no one to care about her. Just like every woman in stereotypical science land, that is what was going to happen to Jillian Reed. She sat there and she really thought about that. And then she said, Fuck no, I'm not dying like this. I'll be damned. I've got a PhD. I only found out about that PhD 15 minutes ago from someone random because I had never gotten to go into the park, but I had a PhD now and I was going to use it for at least five minutes before the LARP ended because you see all of the other players were outside having the LARP that I was inside dying on a ridiculous couch in. How did that happen? How did that character end up there? Played by a person who definitely knew that that's not the story she meant to tell. Ah, uh, welcome my friends to internalized depression. So first we're going to talk a little bit about steering. Then we are going to talk a little bit about internalized oppression and how that can appear in LARPs. And afterwards, we are going to really discuss how we can change that. In the middle, we will find out exactly what happened to Jillian Reed and how it may sound a little familiar to some of you. So, steering. We know that steering is the process in which a player influences the behavior of her character for non-diegetic reasons. You really want to try out that black box because you've never done it before and you've always wanted to cry inside one. So even though your character is the happiest character in the universe, you're going to go in that black box and you're going to cry. You're just going to invent a story because you want to try it out. A la steering. Now, I've come up with a term called liberatory steering. Now, liberatory steering is when a player influences the behavior of her character for the non-diegetic reason of exploring personal responses to structural or internalized oppression. Liberatory steering is done in order to further provoke emancipatory bleed. I'll explain that in two seconds. So, if you are steering for liberation, you say to yourself, just like I did. I am a black American woman. Something, <laughs> surprise. Um, <laughs> something I did not do that you might be really surprised at is I didn't play with toy guns as a kid. Can you guess why? Tamir Rice was a 12 year old boy who was playing by himself when he was shot in less than five seconds by a police officer who considered a 12-year-old child playing with an obviously fake gun to be a threat. I don't play with guns. I never did. We had a super soaker, and it was neon, and that was definitely not a gun. But surprise, someone has also been killed in a Walmart for that same exact reason, a neon toy gun. I went to conscience because I had never ever, ever held a gun. I had never been a gunslinger, being 
the West in general is problematic for someone like me. The Western experience, the idea of Westerns often erases me and erases the horrors that have been done to people like me. Hello, reconstruction and slavery. Yeah, all of that is probably an issue. Um, so playing in a universe in which I was gonna play a badass writer who was going to get to write this experience and not just any writer. Oh no, they wrote me a social justice warrior. So I was gonna go in and I was gonna be like, you capitalist pigs, ignore my Louboutins that I actually, I actually wore Louboutins to this LARP. I, it, I did, I, they were given to me, I did not pay for them, so. That is my inner activist kind of dying, but they're really good shoes. Anyway, so uh, here was a woman who was filthy rich, but was always going to be sticking up for those who could not. And she was guilty and she felt bad, but she was gonna work it out. She spent, she was gonna do those days. She was gonna fight for the people. She was gonna do whatever she needed to do to make people see that they were repeating oppression inside this LARP. As a side note, I was pretty much playing myself. They didn't know that, but so they wrote. Um, let's talk a little bit about internalized oppression. So, internalized impression is real, it's a social theory. Um, it is when a member of a marginalized group replicates the terms of the impressor. As a side note, I'm going to talk quickly about Augusto Boal. Boal is a theater maverick. He created something called Theater of the Impressed. It provides theater to people all around the world and allows people to really talk about change in their government and what oppressions keep you down. Here's a controversial thought. Augusto Boal believed we are all oppressed. Yes, middle-aged white man, you too. That is because the patriarchy affects you too. You wanna know why you can't cry in front of people? It's called the patriarchy. You wanna know why you feel really bad about yourself all the time? Oh, hello, internalized oppression, you live in there. That's what happens. And guess what? You're bringing that to LARP. You're bringing it to LARP and you're replicating it without you knowing it. And you're not just doing it to you. You're doing it to your players. And you are doing it often. And you won't even realize until it happens. Racism, sexism, ableism, ageism, classism, homophobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and many more things that are just social constructs to hold you back. Those are all the internalized oppressions that you are playing with. So let's talk about the Jillian Reed problem. Look how, look how cool she looks, she's so cool. So what I wanted versus what happened. I thought, this is me in my backyard, look how fly I look in the backyard. Badass gunslinger, boss lady, creative scientist, savant, right? This is what I assumed. It was going to go in. It was going to go into the park. It was going to have a good time. Yet what actually happened was Jillian spent literally 12 hours in that one office. I went to the park once. All she did was try and save people. All she did was replicate the entire feminine idea of what you had to do to be a good worker, to be a good scientist, and I didn't even realize it. And it wasn't just me, other co-players did it to me. We were jumping over each other and getting mad at each other and representing the patriarchy and representing racism and ableism, and that was not a part, that was not supposed to be a part of that small nugget. Not only LARP did talk about heavy oppression, but what they didn't notice, and what we as designers sometimes don't notice, is that we're gonna always bring in what is eating us inside into that game. And it will eat you alive too. Notice this picture. What you can't tell is me carrying these guns and not, not touching them at all, because I am still afraid that someone is going to see me touch these guns and kill me. Notice, picture on the left. It looks as if this man is going to shoot me. However, what you don't know is that I have had him in a double wrist lock because I'm also a multiple martial artist. 
I threw people, punched people, tossed people, took their guns, and yet men, for some reason, still thought I was tiny, even when they saw me, even when I held them in a wrist lock. And this just happened to be the picture the photographer caught. Not me being a badass. Now that's not that photographers, it's not necessarily their fault, but this is how I get to remember myself. Even though I knew, I was pretty cool. So how can we start recognizing our own internal oppressions? Listen to yourself. Hey, maybe I don't want to play with this player because they're older and I feel really weird about playing with someone who's older. Oh my goodness, that's ageism. Do it anyway! Do those things anyway. If you're scared, do it anyway. I'm too fat for this role, do it anyway. I am too young for this role, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Feel it anyway. Play with that person. They are cool as fuck. Play with them. Eliminate the can'ts and too muches. I can't be too whatever. I can't play that role. I'm too old. I can't wear that. That's a bit too gay. I have said that. I'm super gay. Why would I say that? <laughs> Will my natural hair make me seem too ethnic? I wear it like this all the time. I'm too fat for this sexy role. Nodded inside Hamlet. <laughs> Women can't be too bossy here. I can't play this scene because I'm not blank. I can't, I can't play this character because I'm not. I can't have this romance because, first of all, we need to talk about our ageism a lot, okay? By the way, after 30, you're still hot, hint. I know, I have it on my license. How can we stop letting internalized oppression affect our play? Listen. Don't put your issues onto others. If you are really, really worried about something, if you think, oh, that woman shouldn't be out there, it's dangerous, it's a LARP. She will be fine. She wants to go down the dark alley because she knows that she's actually not gonna die down the dark alley, but she could have a really cool scene. And if you stop her from going down that dark alley, I will personally find you. I mean, I will really suggest that you don't do that. Stop policing people's safety. safety. If I have negotiated with someone, then what you need to do is let me be. Respect player autonomy. Do not think someone can't do something unless they are physically about to harm themselves by jumping off a building and you know for a fact they will in fact die. Leave them alone. We are playing make-believe. Play with people you might not. You have all missed out on playing with someone really cool. And they have missed out on playing with you because you were something that they did not expect you to be. You are amazing, you are brilliant, you are a good LARPer, you deserve to have fun. We are beautiful and perfect and great as we are and if you keep looking at someone on the outside and determining your play, then you will lose. That's how you lose a LARP. And lastly, it's not your character. It's you. Stop saying, oh, my character wouldn't do this because actually um, they really hate women, but I don't. I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not racist, but my character wanted to call you the N-word in this Regency LARP, but they didn't. <laughs> this is what that means. Don't use that as an alibi. Think about who you are on the inside and what you're dealing with. We are all dealing with internalized oppressions. We are all dealing with things that are results of years and years of social conditioning. I look forward to playing with you. I hope you are not afraid of me. I hope we hang out. I hope we talk. But more importantly, I hope you have the best game.